Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope we are well. Welcome back to the podcast of Helen's Life. I don't know if you can hear that clinking noise, but there's some clinking happening out there. Today, I, after many, many requests, I'm going to be talking about how I have lost two stone since January. Now, it's not normally the kind of thing that I choose to talk about anymore on this channel, and I wasn't necessarily going to cover it or like chat about it because, I don't know, I just just didn't didn't know whether I wanted to but it seems to be quite a requested thing and I've had quite a lot of people dming me and commenting and stuff so how did you do it so I'm gonna tell you how I did it I'm not like obviously disclaimer not a profesh not a, not a nutritionist not a, not an expert and all that and I will be really frank I will be really frank in this video and just say how it is, say how I feel it is for me and how I feel about it. So I'm very to the point these days. I just, yeah, say how it is. So if you're sensitive, you know, either watch with discretion or don't watch. Likewise, if the subject of weight loss and, you know, relationships of food, anything to do with body image and food, is like triggering and makes you uncomfortable just don't watch it just don't watch it so i'll just say that so i'm going to be talking very frankly about food calories and fitness so there you go you've been warned well let's go back to the beginning i feel like i'm doing my actual podcast here so i decided at the beginning of january just after my breakup that i wanted to make some changes in my life physically mentally spiritually just all round wanted to just sort of shake up the year i weighed 13 stone at the beginning of the year i was five foot two i was five foot two i'm still five foot two and my dress size was roughly a 14 to 16 and um i wasn't happy to put it bluntly i wasn't happy with myself i wasn't happy with the way that my body felt i could feel like my chin here i could feel my like really like rubbing against here and and my thighs are rubbing i didn't like the way that my body looked to put it bluntly and that's just a reflection on myself that doesn't mean that you know, I don't like anybody else that looks this way. That's just how I feel about me. I was at my biggest and um, I didn't feel like me at the end of the day. And I didn't feel good. And I wanted to make some changes physically, but also mentally. I wanted to take on this challenge to see if I could actually fucking stick to it. Because I was getting increasingly frustrated with my willpower, my determination, and most of all, my discipline Sometimes I'll set my mind to do something and I'll get bored and then I'll stop. That doesn't really, really, really doesn't help when you've got ADHD and when things lose their appeal, you just lose interest and you don't want to fucking do it anymore. But with dieting, I have yo-yoed so much. Like, obviously, I haven't been that happy with myself for a while because I've tried diets and I've done the whole healthy eating thing and then I get complacent and I'm like, oh, it's fine. And then I'll go back to kind of other habits, older habits, and then I get back to where I started and then I'm happy, unhappy again. And I'm, this cycle was just happening over and over and over again over the years and I was kind of a bit delusional. I didn't know if I was happy or not with myself, but got to the point, beginning of January, where I was like, nope, I'm not happy with myself. I am um, focusing on myself because I've just been for a breakup. Like I need something to focus on. I want to do things that are positive and good for me. And I want to have things to look forward to, like other various things that I was sort of doing in my personal life as well. And I just decided to fucking go for it. So I'm not a biggest fan of when it comes to like new year, new me diets. And I'm not the biggest fan of diet like companies and just the industry generally like, you know, Christmas is over and now you need to lose all this weight. We've literally just been, you know, everyone's just been advertising to eat loads and go have all the fun and Christmas and buy, buy, buy and eat, eat, eat. But now, now that it's all over, you need to lose all the fucking weight. So have this diet, do this diet. You need to feel bad, buy this gym gear, do all these things, blah, 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 blah. This thing's a bit fucked up really. But I did jump at the opportunity when my local boot camp that I go to were doing the 10 week shred. So basically it's a bunch of us bunch of people do the 10 week shred you're shredding you know you're dieting you're doing lots of fitness things like you're cutting you're cutting down on food for 10 weeks 
So I jumped on board. And do you know what? I have done this every single year. And when it gets to my birthday in February, so I've been at it for a measly four weeks, I go out, I party, and then I just fall off the wagon and I'm back to square one. And I almost feel a little bit of guilt and a bit of like frustration at myself that I just didn't stick to it. I don't think that's essentially what it is. Like I've never really sucked to stuff like this. And then I ended up just feeling shit because I've not even tried at the end of the day. I've not made up an excuse and I've not fucking tried end of and I really wanted to prove I really wanted to prove to myself that I could do it now when it comes to mindset and I will get onto this a bit later on when we start talking about food and like lifestyle I think in order to be successful with something like this you're you really have to do it be doing it for the right reasons and you really have to want to do it so if you are doing it because of there's external pressure, external influences, if there are people making you feel guilty, making you feel rubbish about yourself, if societally, if society is getting you down, if the magazines are getting you down, if inst- people on Instagram are getting you down and you feel like you need to change yourself because that's going to make you feel better, it's not going to work out. You'll end up resenting it. You'll end up resenting the the process and what you have to do, to, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to end up resenting the you know, compromises that you're going to be making and all of these things, you're not going to enjoy it and your heart's not going to be in the right place. I don't personally think that you'll really succeed in a way that's sustainable or that makes you happy. I think that when it comes to your body, you are ultimately in control. You don't have to change anything about yourself if you are happy with yourself and you don't have to do you don't have to do anything to appease others at the end of the day you don't need no one needs to go on a diet if you're happy and you're and you want to you know you love yourself that's fucking excellent but equally there is no shame in wanting to make changes to yourself because you can it's your own it's your own body it's your own autonomy do what the fuck you want but never do it because you feel pressured into doing it always make sure it comes from the heart and I truly think that that will a be successful and it will bring you the most joy and just yeah I've got strong opinions on that I feel sometimes I can't talk about these kind of things as I've always been like love yourself and you know promoted body confidence etc but I don't think there's any shame in wanting to make changes to yourself because you choose to Um, and I think that that kind of there is a part of the body confidence movement that can be quite toxic like that just be like love yourself no matter what I don't think that that's healthy I think you should be able to choose I think you should be able to I think as long as you're doing it for the right reasons you should be able to make those decisions yourself you don't always have to love yourself and you don't always have to do anything about it you could maybe it's just a phase me you know I could sit and talk about it for ages but as long as your head and your heart's in the right place that's all that really matters anyway how did I go about doing this so 10 weeks shred they give you a food plan I did sort of stick to it I got some ideas from it but I sort of generally knew what I was doing anyway like I have a rough idea of how to make healthy meals and you know that through having like personal trainer friends and like having ex-partners that were into that kind of world I had already some inspiration so essentially it's a calorie deficit I calorie counted because I felt that I was in control. I felt like I could see what I was doing. I felt like I could kind of log everything down and I felt like comfortably in control. I didn't obsess over it, but I was very realistic with it. And for me, that was the best practice. Like I just had to see it because I have to write notes all the time, like on my to-do lists and reminders because I forget things and it's likely that I will forget what I've eaten or what I've done. Um, So I have to log it. It just makes my brain feel a bit better. So I'm five foot two, I'm relatively active. So I put myself at 1400 to 1500 a day, admittedly around 1300 if I didn't get any exercise in or I didn't move, That's, that's what I decided to do. And I must admit the weight came off at a really, healthy kind of rate it was like one to two pounds a week I did have a head start because in February I started ADHD medication and I completely wiped my appetite so I wasn't eating much in February to be quite honest with you I did have my birthday and I did go to Amsterdam but even on those occasions I didn't eat much um because I had no appetite (laughs) so 
yeah. So that gave me a little bit of a sort of a head start, I suppose. Like I lost quite a few few more pounds in Feb. But other than that, it has been about two pounds a week, one to two pounds a week. So a typical day for me would be porridge or overnight overnight oats. And it's like the same if I'm having, so it'll be oats, coconut milk, a little drizzle of my, my favourite syrup stuff. I love this shit. Buy it from Aldi. Buy it all. They're all not, they're, they're well cheap in Aldi, so I get them all. Blueberries, and that would be it. So I either have it hot as porridge, or I have it cold as over oats, and that's just perfect. With a coffee, and my vitamins, and my meds, and maybe a satsuma. Lovely jubbly. Then lunch was usually, like, the second portion of the night before's dinner. So, like, leftovers, as it were. Or no, it was just another portion. But on the days that I didn't have it because it was like a Monday or or, what, or a weekend or something. Um, I became a big fan of these bowl pots, which like be- beans and things and just pop them in the microwave because I'm lazy. And I just had one of those because they did, they did the job. Loved them, loved them. But yeah, my lunches were normally the second portion of the dinner from the night before, which was most of the time, because I'm living on my own, I sometimes would like my food to be quick and Sometimes I couldn't be asked unless I've got a HelloFresh box, which if you've got a HelloFresh, you can do the calorie controlled options, which make dinner time a bit more fun and you feel more special. But likewise, because it's portion for two people, whatever I wouldn't have like one like that evening, I would have for lunch the next day. Same deal. But if I'd if I'm if I'm not doing HelloFresh, it would be bit of salmon or a protein, so salmon or fish or like Linda McCartney sausages or something vegetarian with rice, microwave rice and, and um, microwave steamed vegetables. Takes no more than 15 minutes to have a dinner like that. So I'd have that, delicious. I would always allow myself to have my Perrinase. If there's one thing in this planet that I can't live without, it's a bit of a condiment. So Perrinase made it into my food plan. I a- allowed that, I allocated calories for my Perrinase. Or I would have a stir fry with like rice noodles, rice noodles, and either prawn or corn. Prawns or corn chicken with like a stir fry sauce. I just go to that section in Tesco or wherever it is and it comes as a meal deal, don't it? So you get like your vegetable, your noodles and your sauce and it comes as a package. So I'd do that. Um, Actually, that's what I had for my lunch today was my leftover stir fry. Or it would be like a slow cooker chili or a slow cooker curry. Something along the lines of that. If I was having like a dinner that felt oh ah this is this is um a treat you can get low calorie pizzas from Sainsbury's and also as to do a vegan pizza which is also low calorie so like spicing it up a bit treat yourself with a pizza and then making a big salad to go with it um that was often fun but you know at the end of the day if I'm not going over my calories in the day then it's fine like yes you could sit there and have 12 Mars bars and that's your day, but it's not particularly nutritious or gonna give you the right kind of energy. Um, so, you know, as long as you're not over, as long as you're not going over your calories every single day, then it ain't bad. I'd say breakfast was always two to 300 calories and lunch and dinner, four to 500. And then I have two snacks in a day. One afternoon snack around 150 calories, so that like a breakfast bar or like a naked bar or like a little Cadbury's doodah, whatever. Um, and then I'd have, either like a mini magnum or a protein mousse or a protein yogurt after my dinner in the evening with a cup of tea. And again, 150 calories, easy, in it. So that's kind of what I eat in the week. Um, very repetitive, I'm fine with that. Um, and nice, drink lots of water as well. I also drink too much coffee. I know that's probably not the best, but I'm just a coffee fiend. Just love it, just love it. Love, love that caffeine, helps my brain. Um, But when it comes to the weekend, so this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. And this is more of like a lifestyle thing. And this is where I'm just going to be really fucking brutally honest, to be honest with you. (laughs) Bit tough love, bit tough love. So obviously calorie deficit works because you're burning more than you're consuming, right? And when it comes to the weekend, yes, you can be a bit more lenient and have things to look forward to, what have you. Like, that's when we're going to be socialising, friends have invited you out for meals or drinks and stuff. And you can have a few more, few things at the weekend that not aren't necessarily on plan. But you have to, you have to bear in mind that, let's say, your total 
maintenance calories, i.e. the calories that you have overall that makes you maintain your weight is this amount, right? If you're eating less than that, you're gonna lose weight. So all week you will have a bank of calories left over, yeah? If you consume a load of shit over the weekend, which fills up those ones or spends all those extras, the ones that are in deficit, then you're not gonna lose weight, are you? <laughs> it's just being realistic. I hope that makes sense. So when it comes to weekends and socializing and doing things with friends, you can do that and you can still have a good time, but it's just about being accountable and being honest with yourself. So for example, you get invited out for me for a dinner. So normally I would have like a start, a main dessert and a few drinks, maybe a side, just go to town, love it. Maybe don't do that. Perhaps instead of doing all of that, just have like a main and no dessert and like a glass of wine or a main, a dessert and a soft drink or cleaner version. So something f not like not like a big juicy burger and fries and cheese and onion rings, maybe a lighter option and then you can have a dessert and a drink. Does that make sense? So it's just kind of just being mindful of what's on the menu. Do you want to have like a hearty meal or do you want to have something that's a bit like healthier, I suppose, so you can have the dessert. Does that make sense? It's just being mindful of like, okay, there's a roughly, so I just balance this out, okay? So it's just making better decisions and, you know, making decisions that again, you're taking accountability, you're doing this for a reason, um, when it comes to drinking as well and socializing, I still drank. I didn't drink like huge amounts. In fact, for January, I didn't drink at all. You know, I went to Amsterdam and drank beers in Amsterdam. I went to Margate and partied. Like there have been weekends where I've drank and it's been fine. It's just gin and slimline or Prosecco or you don't have 12 pints. You go sit to the half pints and have water. Like water as well like staying hydrated and also you don't always have to drink just because you're going out to the pub or going out to a bar like there's been many occasions where i've not drank and it's been great it's been fine um again mindful decisions just not overdoing it i suppose just yeah just not going gray gray but it also ties into mindset again i think mindset is probably the key factor here you've got to change it a, you've got to want the the goals. You've got to want to achieve and you've, you've got to see that in a positive way. You've got to be like, I'm working hard for me right now and I'm making these sacrifices or I'm changing my lifestyle. I'm changing the way that I am because I see a future version of myself and I want to be that future version of myself. It's also changing the narrative. So a lot of the time when we do diets, we have this sort of negative relationship where it feels like, I'm missing out, I'm without, I am compromising. I am not having it and it's the worst thing ever. Rather than seeing these things like that, like, oh, is anyone getting dessert? Rather than being like, I can't, I'm being good. Ugh. Be like, no, I'm all right, actually. I'm quite satisfied. And actually believe it, because a lot of the time you, you don't need the dessert or you don't need that. You're not actually that hungry. You're just doing it because it's nice. It tastes good and you want it and everyone else is having it. You want to join in and you want to, don't want to miss out. You don't need it all the time. So it's changing that narrative from, no, I'm changing the narrative from I am without and I am missing out and I'm getting FOMO and poor me to, no, so actually I'm cool. And you start to believe that because you you are fine. I think it is, it's, it is all about just being honest with yourself, realistic and just, <laughs> just being like you know again being fucking accountable it makes sense like for me it makes sense if i eat a load of fucking calories i'm not gonna lose weight it's not gonna make a difference if i if i eat if i'm calorie controlled and eating clean as it were in the week and then the weekend comes around and i piss that all away because i've had like gone out on a bender then had takeaways and everything and I don't see a result on Monday or I don't see any like loss the next week I can't cry about that that's my own fault so I can have fun I can be sociable I can do all these things with my friends but it's just bearing in mind like there is gonna be some compromise and there's gonna be like a change in the way that you see how you do that now like 
it's, you've got to understand it and not slip back into old habits or things that you may have previously done that you actually didn't really like and you didn't like about yourself. You think these things are going to make you happy, but actually afterwards they don't. And that unhappiness or that kind of guilt, as it were, I feel outweighs the initial want for it. And it's just bearing that in mind. For me, it was always about balance and not having the right balance and actually being quite fucking greedy at the end of the day. I was a greedy bitch. I was a greedy person. When it came to food, when it came to booze, I got carried away. And that was something that I had to come to terms with. Like you are, you actually never, you don't need all this food. You don't need to eat it all. And you're you're wasting stuff too, you know? And when you start to live in moderation and you start to actually notice like what you're eating and how you're enjoying food, you do realize, actually I don't need all that or why did I need all that I don't need it I don't believe in demonizing food though I don't believe in like there's bad food I just think that there is food that you you, that certain foods need balance do you know what I mean and I don't believe in like oh I've eaten this thing so now I need to go to the gym burn it off because I'm a terrible person that needs to burn in hell because I ate a muffin don't believe in that either like if the muffin works in your within your plan and it's like accounted for and like works within your calorie deficit, like cool. If it doesn't, then be like, okay, well, either accept that you might not have a loss that week because you might, you might not, or go to the fucking gym. But don't punish yourself. Don't do it out of punishment. You either want to or you don't. Like go in, make these decisions for yourself, knowing the consequences. So. That's why you should never punish yourself. You'll just be like, or not see it as punishment. Like I had a muffins, but so I'm gonna go for a run because it wasn't in my plan or I didn't account for that. Or not, or don't, or don't do it. Or don't, and just accept, just accept the, the consequences of it. Yeah, but just don't demonize food. I think at the end of the day, it's understanding what you want to achieve and looking at that goal and trying to achieve that goal whilst also being realistic, honest of yourself, and I've said a million times already, but also just being accountable for things. It does take determination. It does take discipline if you want to see results. I don't believe in people being so restrictive that they kind of make themselves miserable, but, and I don't believe in the whole kind of there is a lot of negativity surrounding diets and like the way that we talk to ourselves and the way that we view food. And I get that a hundred percent. I do believe that there is an element of compromise when you're trying to lose weight. You can be more active and see change, but most of the time it is down to diet and what you're eating, which makes a difference. But yeah, other than the diet side, which is the most challenging part, I just boot camp every morning. And if I'm not boot camping, I'm doing, I have PT session once a week, so personal training once a week. And if I don't manage to do a boot camp or whatever, I'll make sure I do a long walk, or a long dog walk. I like to make sure that I'm active every single day, just because I like how energy flows through my body, how I feel more like positive, how I feel more motivated, and it just gets me going. I like how exercise makes me feel. And I like feeling stronger and I like feeling more fit. And I just love the, I love it. I love being outside, I love going for walks. So exercise is important and training, but you know, you don't have to, if you can't, as long as your diet's, you know, sensible. As long as your diet is realistic, then it should be okay. But that's how I did it. It is all about mindset and wanting the right things. Also just not be, putting too much fucking pressure on yourself. Like if you didn't, if you don't lose anything one week, a lot of it is circumstantial. And also, it's not the end of the world. There's always the week after. I mean, if, if there is a, a long line of weeks where you're not shifting anything, then perhaps it's time to talk to a doctor or a personal trainer or a nutritionist, you know? But there's so many things that come into play. Like, when I'm on a period, I literally put on six pounds. <laughs> and I bloat like hell. And I also have to be mindful that the week before my period, that is when the cravings kick in and I want to eat everything in sight. And I do, I do allow myself some of those cravings. Like I, I just crave Colin Caterpillar faces. I just crave Colin Caterpillar faces. So I was like, normally I would go out and eat everything that I ever wanted. But I was like, I was deciding, I was like, 
I was, you know, decisive. I was like, right, I really don't fucking like Calla Gabba. What Calla Gabba so bad? So I went out and bought one. I went out and bought his face and I ate it because I wanted it because I was feeling premenstrual. I don't feel like, you know, you need to be fully restrictive all the time, but it is, it is just being mindful of that. So being on your period, that really impacts and it has hard. But that is it, really. Um, I hope it was useful and somewhat insightful or just, you know, interesting to hear my perspective. I don't know. But thanks for watching. Peace out.